Hey guys and welcome back to Africa X5 Networks. Now in a world where apps like Instagram and Snapchat make a huge impact on the way we share ourselves online, it's easy to forget just how beautiful and unique we all are. And today's event is all about that, bringing body positivity to light. Now we are live here at the Waterstones event in London with not one, but two books are being launched to celebrate the body confidence of women around the globe. And they're by the wonderful ladies, the Slum Flower, AKA Chidera Ageru and Michelle Elman. So we're here, we're gonna chat to them and see what they think. Um, and so here we have this evening, we have Chidera Eguru, perhaps better known online as The Slum Flower, the unstoppable force behind the groundbreaking Saggy Boobs Matter movement, and the author of What a Time to Be Alone, The Slum Flower's Guide to Why You Are Already Enough, which was published today. Love it! Day. And then we have the award-winning body positivity activist and confidence coach, Michelle Elman, whose Instagram hashtag, Scarred Not Scared, recognizes that all bodies are equally valuable and broadens the billboard definitions of beauty. She is also the author of Am I Ugly? Her memoir, which came out two weeks ago. <laughs> um, and just today, Michelle has been featured in the Daily Mail. <laughs> Big surprise and amazing. And um, just say, Chidera has climbed from what were you this morning? 10 in the Amazon. I was store? number 10, now I'm number 4 in the Amazon. Wow. 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 <laughs> no big deal. Um, so tonight we'll be celebrating the release of both of these books. We'll also be discussing the expanding body positivity movement, the virtues of social media as a community, and then of course these brilliant women will give their tips just throughout on how to improve your self-worth, mental health, and relationship with your body. Okay, so first of all, um, we're just gonna do a little intro. If you guys want to just talk about yourselves for a minute and say how you came into the kind of body positive kind of atmosphere. Go first. Okay. <laughs> so for me, the reason why body confidence is really important to me is because I'm learning that every single person deserves to feel great about their body and nobody should feel like they need to earn anyone's approval to exist. Um, and so through me literally living by example, I aim to encourage women to just not wait for people to tell you it's okay to like yourself, which is why I decided to create Saggy Boots Matter, because I'm quite slim and I'm quite attractive, so of course I benefit off a world that allows slim and attractive people to exist without being questioned. But having Saggy Boots has meant that I've noticed that you don't have to be slim or any particular body size for you to feel affected by how your boobs look. And so I felt that it was really important that I initiate that conversation. So uh, the body, positive mo body positivity movement rather, has become huge online in the last few years. And what would you say it is and how did the two of you each come across it? So I think the main distinction is the difference between body positivity and body confidence because people... Tell them. <laughs> Today I did a talk with me about a week ago, so she's just hearing the same thing. Um, body positivity is a political movement used to uplift the voices of marginalised people and fight the oppression they face by living in those bodies. Body confidence is your individual confidence. It's about whether you feel confident enough in your body. And the reason why that's how I define it is because we need to start making that distinction. They're two separate things. And any time a journalist conflates, because it's usually journalists, media does it as well, but conflate the two, we're actually overtaking a movement that wasn't created, well, it is created for everyone, but with certain people in mind. So essentially what Michelle's, uh, yeah, what she's saying is that if slimmer people like myself are being called body positivity activists, what happens is that we're forgetting that it was initially created by people who wanted to represent and um, extend the voices of those who are... But you live in a marginalised body. I know, but this is the thing. <laughs> See, I'm constantly, like, we I'm have constantly this, battling with this one. She lives in a marginalised body because she lives in a black body. That's simply, like, 
there are black bodies in this world who aren't safe in their body. If they can't be safe in their body, they can't be confident in the body. So I know you're thin, but you live in a marginalised body. Yeah, that's why I'm like, I'm always careful about that territory. I do always specify that I'm talking about sahibus rather than body positivity because my body as a whole is. But people always will like pink. Yeah. It, it doesn't really matter what you say. Yeah. But it's are. important that you're witnessing in this conversation so that next time you do want to engage in a conversation to do with body positivity or body confidence, you keep in mind that the two. But the reason why I emphasize marginalized over fat is because then I don't have a place in body positivity because the main thing I talk about is health. And that's also excluding disabled people from the conversation. That's excluding trans people from the conversation. It is just about fat. We're actually excluding a lot of marginalized bodies. <laughs> so you're included. <laughs> Yay. Like coming in power. Um, so what do you do you feel needs to happen to keep the body positivity movement going? Or make it better? I think for me, what I want to see is more celebrities actually get involved in the conversation. Um, as much as it's not their responsibility to prove anything or to, to expose or talk about personal aspects of how they feel about themselves, I do think it would help a lot if they choose to just open up and say, you know when you saw me on that red carpet, I was wearing three bras and spanks and, you know, just say things like that. It matters a lot because when we look at these images and we're like, oh my gosh, she looks so snatched, she looks amazing, she bounced back so quickly from having a child, that we unknowingly are pushing this idea that women have to constantly be liked and constantly be desired. So if, if women that are in positions of power and influence actually open up and say, sometimes I don't feel great or, you know, for this particular event, I don't actually, I looked very, very different to how I normally look. It would help so much, but I don't know, it's a matter of time. Yeah. No, I mean, the Daily Mail article came out today and I literally went on my stories and I was like, this is actually how I look in this dress, the same dress I was wearing on there without making, having, having rolled out of bed and not being able to speak because I was like so crazy this morning. But I think the main thing that I'm seeing at the moment is body positivity is a separate conversation from everyday life. So it's like, let's talk about body positivity. Let's go back to our lives where we judge everyone and talk about appearances non-stop. And you see these on the same accounts. They'll have like all their body positive accounts and all their body positive tweets or whatever it is. And then they'll have a post where they're like, oh, have you seen Laura from Love Island? She's so old, she's a dinosaur. And I'm like, do you not see how that's not body positive? Like we, sorry, I'm talking about Love Island, but I have, been watching, I have been watching it. I'm sorry, very, very sorry. But it's this thing where if you are judging other people so much, no wonder you walk down the street thinking everyone's judging you. True. Tell them. And it's this thing that like, I'm capable of what, I mean, please choose another show other than Love Island, but I'm not endorsing it. But the point is, I can talk about this show without actually talking about bodies because I've done it. I've been watching it for the last however many weeks, don't mind me, how <laughs> many weeks I've wasted on this show. But you can actually talk about it without discussing people's appearances. And we need to actually move that forward and not have this like, it's even passive aggressive comment, like let's say like someone cheats on, cheats, uh, your boyfriend cheats on you with a woman and it's like, oh, well, she's such a slut, she's such a slag. Like, no, let's not, let's not use that language. Let's not like perpetuate basically toxic ma masculinity and all of these really misogynistic concepts, let alone like the language itself. But it's not a separate conversation. This is everyday life. And we start by changing how we're talking about ourselves. Exactly. And we start by changing how we're dis like discussing other people in the room. You can, you can hate someone all you like. You just don't have to make it about their appearance. You can hate Trump and not make it about the fact that he's fat. There are a million and one things you can criticize Trump for. Why he's fat? He literally has given you a whole Twitter thread of things you can criticise him for. But criticising his fat doesn't hurt Trump, it actually hurts other fat people who are seeing that tweet. So, basically, my book was written for all the recovering overthinkers around the world, including myself. Um, and the whole point of it is to provide you with clarity. This book is not going to give you the answers, it's going to give you clarity. Because clarity comes from you asking your own self questions and you taking the time out to investigate why you're ending up in certain circumstances. So when you're able to see certain behaviours on a page that you don't even recognise in yourself, and you're like, wait, that's me, I do that. That's clarity. And clarity is so underrated, and I think everyone deserves to have clarity. So definitely, you'll have a clearer head by the time you're done with this book. I would 
just say that the reason why I went with a memoir when I was writing and I fought for this memoir over like a traditional like body positive A to Z is because I wanted to emphasize that body confidence and body positivity is a long journey. Um, in hindsight, you can look back at my book and be like, oh, there was that moment where she drew, grew just that bit more confident. But it's only in hindsight it was a like light bulb moment. Because when you're living it, it doesn't feel like a light bulb moment. It just feels like, oh, when I was 15, I decided to stop talking negatively about myself because I saw my friend doing it. I didn't like her doing it to herself, so I was going to stop doing it. It was one small decision I made when I was 15. Now, if you read articles like where I've given interviews, because you have to give short, snappy interviews, it'll be like, that was the light bulb moment. When I was living it, I was walking out of the sports center, hot and sweaty after a pee lesson. That was it. So my main message from my book is start living life now and that it takes a really long time and small steps do build up but it's only going to be in hindsight that you realise how far you've come. Also to add to that, if you buy it tonight they can sign it. Yeah, yeah we're going to be doing signing after. Not me. <laughs> so my question is more about that sort of self-care movement that's becoming more prevalent as well, the body, body positivity. Um, and obviously there's a lot of noise out there that can cloud our judgment and make us feel very vulnerable. What is your go-to self-care move when you feel like you need to take that time for yourself? For me, I, I'm all about I'm all about trying to refine my mind as much as possible. So it comes from my form of self-care is me reviewing all the decisions I've made this week and asking myself, is this taking me closer to the person that I said I want to be? And my friend Nicole is sat in front here. She's always pointing you up <laughs> on blast. She always she always does this to me where I'll come and I'll be like, yes, yeah, so this happened to me, can you imagine? And she'll be like, okay, you're saying you want to do all these things. Is this thing going to take you closer to the person that you said you want to be? Is this panel you're going to go and tire yourself over doing going to take you closer to the person you said you want to be in five years? If the answer is no, why are you engaging in it? Why are you doing it? So asking myself why and actually taking time before I go all guns in blazing into a situation is my form of self-care because that leaves me with a sense of peace and a lot of the time, when you respond to a situation after you've given more time to actually review it and reflect on it, you feel like a more mature person when you approach it and then like, you just seem more chilled out. Hello and thanks for joining us. So we are with Africa, Africa, Africa. Yeah. beautiful name. Thank She's you. here at the book launch of two books and we're really excited about that. So tell me your thoughts on today. I just think as, as a black woman having to kind of navigate a society where I have to feel kind of under threat all the time, it's very incredible to see spaces like this. And from a woman that has so much resilience, Shadara in particular, and from... Um, from Emily, was Michelle. it Michelle? So sorry. sorry. Um, from Michelle as well, kind of talking about their experiences and turning their pain into empowerment. I, I think it's incredible, and I think to be able to look at a vision like that and know that young black girls are kind of seeing that kind of stuff uprising on social media. Yeah, it's incredible. So, do you have anything that relates to them? Any past experiences that you can share with anyone else about that? I think for me, it has been kind of embracing my sobriety. I find that it's also, we live in a society that normalizes harmful drinking, for example, and having to kind of be the outsider of that and find my own voice and individuality. I think movements like this encourage my own. So yeah, I do, I do see myself in that. It's powerful. Well, thank you so much for joining us thank today. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. One thing that I took away from it, especially at the end when they're discussing kind of like different people of different ethnicities and backgrounds yeah. discussing uh, problems that perhaps are more relevant to them than others. I actually feel, me, I'm Middle Eastern, and I feel there's often a lack of discourse amongst Middle Eastern women, whether you be, you are Arabic, Persian, mm. in general, it's usually, and not to say that it's not important to, to discuss matters amongst black women, amongst Asian women, 
but that also um, there's also this huge issue that I would like to explore myself. So I think what Chadira's been able to do for me is to actually speak up for matters that not only matter for like my friends who identify in different ways, because obviously I'm an intersectional feminist, so all matters kind of yeah, all things matter to me in terms of that. But there are certain levels of, di of discourse that I want to kind of explore, and I think Shadira's kind of given me that confidence. Um, and that's one of the many reasons I came today is to actually just say, you know what, I can speak up for matters that are relevant to me as well as anyone else and body confidence as well. <laughs> no, that's amazing. I feel, what about your opinion? Because I know there is a lot to take away from this event. So to put you on the spot, it's a bit hard. But um, if you could say like one word that you could take away from this event, what would you say? I think what I can take away from it is that like sort of like everyone matters and like even though like everyone in the room sort of has different experiences when it comes to like experiences like in their own body and like um, as the, like ex their existence like I think one I think what I took from it is that like like by virtue of you existing like you yeah you matter and like your life has mean like you have a reason like you have a reason to be here like just as much as anyone else does like it doesn't matter um, like what you look like and like um, sort of like what you've been through like everyone is deserving of, of happiness and you don't have to you don't have to earn that from anyone else or like prove it to anyone else like it's just what you deserve yeah, I feel like this event is is, a, is really a way to kind of tell people, even whether or not you attend or not, anyone who reads the book or follows these people online on social media, it's like you are worthy no matter who you are and what experiences you have gone through. I feel like by not recognizing your self-worth, like I myself, I, I struggled with accepting me being overweight and me being bigger than most other people my age or like around me. It's like by not accepting my worth just because I don't look like these people, I'm neglecting myself. That's self-harm. Hey guys, so joining me now is Chidira, who was behind this amazing book launch with her and Michelle. So she just grabbed her quickly before she was like, hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm so good. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you. Do you know what? How, just to wrap it up in a few words, how would you describe this whole experience? Because I know you've been a super busy. You've been ITV, Lorraine, just promoting this book. How have you found this whole experience? Definitely unforgettable. Draining, but unforgettable. And I say draining because it requires you giving a lot of yourself. It's a lot of smiling, a lot of thank yous. And as much as I'm grateful for all of them, it does take a toll on you as a human being. And it's important to be honest about that. But overall, I'm so excited for the journey ahead. And I'm really grateful that I've been able to take part in something so amazing. So what's one thing that you would like the audience to take away from this book? Because I know there's a lot to cover, but what's one thing that you would like them to take away from it? Um, I would just love for the audience to understand that you're in such a great position right now to take control of your life and you shouldn't have to wait until next week Wednesday or 1st of January 2019 to start creating important changes in your behavioural patterns and it comes from you being accountable and addressing certain behaviours and that's what this book will allow you to do. And what's next? You know, what's up for you? Because I know you've got something up your sleeve. Well, <laughs> the aim here is to dominate as many possible crevices of the media mm. through television, radio, maybe more books. But I definitely do want to see what a time to be alone formatted for television. I think television needs a conversation like this. And what better time than now to start encouraging people to find clarity? Well, good luck to the future. I'll be watching you. I'm just so proud of you, what you've been doing. So that's all right. So go for it. And we're looking forward to seeing you soon. Yeah. <laughs>